Hello and welcome to Wilcom's video short series for the Embroidery Studio E4.0. Now today we're going to talk about uh, some elements inside your software. Uh, what we're going to start off with are the shading and open fills elements inside the program and we're going to start with the accordion spacing. The accordion spacing tool, I just have a design on the screen here, is going to be this uh, uh, particular tool here and it's going to allow you to uh, do uh, blend fills basically using the whether it's a satin stitch or a fill stitch and um, basically if, if I wanted to go in let's say I'm going to use a column C stitch you know as I select the column C stitch here uh, I'm just going to go on screen and just do a, uh, a little curve like this I'm going to press enter and I'm going to enter the width of this by pressing enter here. Now with the accordion tool actually what I'm going to do as well I'm going to go in uh, and I'm going to navigate over to the object properties. I want to go to underlays and I'm going to take off the underlay settings for this. Um, I'm also going to press H for reshape tool making sure that I start on one end of this and exit on the other end of this as you can see here. Uh, so uh, with that in order um, I'm going to navigate up top here. I'm going to click on the accordion spacing tool. Once I left click, it's going to go in and immediately um, use the first profile here in the object properties. And that's going to be uh, under your special effects tools here, labeled FX. What you can do with this accordion tool, basically, it uh, goes basically from um, the tighter density to a looser density fill, which is controlled by the spacing here. And this allows you to go in. If I wanted to decrease the maximum amount of spacing here, I'll just click on my little arrows here. I can move this down and it's going to tighten those stitches up like you just saw just now. What we have here also are eight profiles. Uh, the first one here is going to be your increasing linear profile. And the one to the right of it is going to be the opposite, decreasing linear profile. Same thing uh, for uh, the ones that are going to be underneath this actually. Uh, the second one is going to be increasing uh, exponential profile and of course the second will be decreasing uh, exponential profile. So as um, you, I select it here and it chooses the first uh, item here, the first profile, if I click on the opposite profile it's just going to sw switch just like this. Okay. The second one is going to look like this. Okay. The third one down will be the convex profile so when I click this one it's going to give me this look here and if I choose the one to the right of course it's going to be the opposite okay the last one's on the list here is going to be convex concave profile as I select it here that's what the top is going to look like if I reverse it it's going to look like this and the great thing about using uh, these uh, profiles here is that it gives you the ability to go in if you want to change something or if you want to add a, a second color um, I could just go in with everything on the screen listed here. I'm just going to do a control D as I compress the control key plus the D key to duplicate um, the color here. I'm going to change the color here to yellow. Okay. And for this profile, I'll just go in with the accordion and use the opposite profile here that you see. And so I can make this work this way. So you're constantly using um, the profiles, basically, if you're blending uh, two or more colors with the design, actually, is how it works. Okay. And that's the accordion using the satin stitch. Okay. Um, if I'm going to use this using the complex fill stitch, and I'll just go in and I'll just take this off. And again, with this, I'm just going to go in and make sure that the stitch here, I'm going to click on FX and go to underlays, make sure that there's no underlay stitches here. So I'm just going to, as I select this now uh, with the complex fill tool, I can also navigate and turn on the accordion spacing tool. And this is what it looks like. Okay. I'll go in and I'm going to change the background color by navigating uh, to our background display colors. And I just want to choose a different color here so that you can actually see how that looks. And 
and I'm going to press D also to hide the background image and that's the D key so here we are we have our accordion here we can go in and select the different profiles here okay it's gonna give us some nice looks here uh, on the screen here so as, as I go in and change the, the different profiles here and this could be something here that uh, I don't know maybe you want to use uh, the fabric in the background for a color also and just use a one color for this and uh, that's a, a great way uh, to go in and use the accordion spacing tool inside the program and of course again you have the ability to change the spacing maximize it okay or you can adjust also the minimum just like this and you just play with these to get your desired effect with it and that is the accordion spacing tool okay uh, next uh, I want to talk about the color blending tool okay with the color blending tool inside the software um, I'm gonna just go in this is the color blending icon here that you see and it's grayed out because nothing is selected so as I navigate over and I'll choose um, I'll choose this one this sale and once I choose that sale now the color blending tool is active I'm gonna left click on it like this as soon as I left click on it like that I'm gonna get a color color blending uh, box on my screen here and I have a bottom color that's for the bottom layer that's gonna be close to the fabric and I have one that's gonna be on top of that okay now normally if you're gonna do a blending fill using two colors uh, you want to first go in and I'm gonna click on the down arrow here see my colors here and I'm gonna use that same color or you know what normally what you would do basically is you want to work from um, the lightest color to the darkest color okay so I'm gonna leave this one as number one um, I still have my same eight profiles that I showed you with the accordion spacing here and um, for the bottom one here because I want this to fill the object in completely okay so I'll use the constant profile for that bottom layer if I want to adjust the spacing I could adjust the spacing of this one making it um, more open or tighter but that we'll leave this at point 40 here for now the second one will change the color of this one to purple and for this one we'll use the uh, profile we'll use the increasing linear profile okay we could always change that once we get into the accordion spacing tool as I click OK for this it's gonna go in and it's gonna do the blend fill here like you see and in the color object list of course you will see the two colors here um, right beside each other here simultaneously um, and they're grouped together and so these are my two colors okay now what I also have is my object properties here that I can use for my accordion spacing and the same thing applies here I can choose uh, a different profile as you see here and it's going to change that profile based on uh, my the profile that I choose here for it okay the same thing still applies here with the maximum spacing and the minimum spacing here with the accordion spacing uh, using the uh, color blending tool inside your software the next tool that I want to talk about is the tool for stippling uh, we have a feature inside the program called stippling and here we have the uh, object on the screen here which is a complex fill and the way that this works with the complex fill is if I will just go in I'm gonna delete this real quick and I'll go back in uh, so I'm gonna go in and digitize this color here in a complex fill as I select here and I'm also gonna choose the here are the, here are the stippling tools that you see here okay you have the stippling fill the regular fill you have the stipple back stitch and you have the stipple stem stitch we'll start with the original here and as I go in just like I'm creating a complex fill as I go in here let's enter and I'm just gonna change the fill type here to a complex fill 
And so what I'm going to do here also, I can click on the stipple fill here. Now, what's happening here now is that the size uh, for the stipple fill objects are at a very large uh, number. So as I navigate over here to my object properties here, I have the ability here in my stipple values and the uh, loop spacing, which is 7.3, which is large for the size. So I'm just going to go in and type in 2.5 and press the enter. Now, the lower this number goes down and here will be the smallest. Now, because of the size of the design here, it's gonna, it's gonna play a role also. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the size of the design. And let's make this five inches tall, much larger, okay? And because it's larger now, the stipple fill will take better effect here as far as uh, going in and filling in these items. So as I click on this, my fills, I'm going to scroll down here and here again, my stipple values, if I take that number down further, you know, it's going to begin to in, fill in those areas uh, a lot better here. So um, this is how it works. Now it will depend on the, the shape that you choose for it also will be a, uh, a factor in that as well. And all I'm going to do here for that one inside my color object list is uh, place this right before Let's see here. Right before number 18. So I'm just going to grab this and move it up. And put that right in the middle there like, like that. So that, that's how that's going to look. Now um, you also have um, the other options here as far as the uh, back stitch for the stipple fill. Um, I'll go in in this particular one here as I select this complex fill. Um, I'm going to click on the stipple back stitch. Okay, again, uh, the size here inside my color object list here, my, uh, my object property list here, again, I'm going to change this to 1.2. And as I, again, lower that number here for the stipple values, um, it will go in and start uh, filling these areas in in a uh, back stitch. Okay, these are thicker than a regular running stitch here. Okay, and that's the way it looks set the program okay the, the last one that we have is going to be um, I'm going to click here I'm going to click on the stipple stitch for the stem stitch here and again um, with this I'm going to go in and change the, the values here 1.2 and of course once I do that and it fills this area in this is this is what it looks like with a stipple fill stitch okay and um, Again, so this is uh, what you can use, how you can use these particular stitch types um, here inside the program uh, that are very, very, very valuable. And um, I'm gonna show you something here also. Uh, we're gonna show you the cross stitch, okay? And the cross stitch uh, is gonna be uh, this tool here inside the software, the settings for it, okay? And the way that that works inside the software if I click on or create a complex fill stitch, I can select it here and choose the cross stitch pattern. And this is what that cross stitch pattern looks like here. And again, with your properties, you can go in, you can edit. Um, you can go in and you can change the style here to an upright cross or back to the full cross like this inside the software. And inside here, you can adjust the threads as well. <clears throat> Um, you can also go in uh, and adjust the floss direction here as well inside the program. Okay, your your step stitch, per step stitches per inch here, or your stitches per inch, um, with your fabric count here can be adjusted also. Okay, and that's going to give you some movement here as well. And so um, here for your millimeters can also be adjusted. It's going to adjust, change the size here. For your fabric count and it's telling me here it's doing 13.6 stitches here um, just a great tool inside the software and so um, with these 
your accordion spacing tools, your color blending tools inside the software, and your stipple fills, um, and your cross stitch fills here, and your patterns. Now we also have another one here inside the, inside the software also, and I'm going to just click on the bottom inside the water and select this, and I'm going to change the stitch type to a tatami as I navigate up here and choose tatami for this. Now um, I'm going to change the color of this also and make it lighter so that you can see um, what, it's, what it's actually doing here. Now for instance, uh, so this next tool that I'm going to show you is called the Trapunto, and the Trapunto tool is listed here. Okay, and that's a very, very nice tool also. And let me show you what this does. I'm going to click on the complex fill here. I'm going to go to the underlay stitch and I'm just going to remove it. And I'm, go I'm going to go to the fills and I'm going to make the stitch much wider like this. And so you see here um, underneath this, if I'm going to do or use this fill type here, how wide the density is here. But you have these running lines here. Okay. That will cause a problem for the look of the finished piece actually. Now what I can do with this by using the Trapunto tool um, it's going to actually remove all of these stitches and force them uh, along the outside edge of the fill as I navigate here and click Trapunto here. So as you can see without this you have these stitch lines running underneath that will show up on the garment and so in a way to hide those I'm just going to navigate up top here and choose the Trapunto tool like this. And it's going to go in and hide those stitches if, if I choose to use that. And so it's just another great tool inside the program um, from your shading and open fills element inside your program. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And as always, we ask that you visit us at www.willcomamerica.com. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more product information, visit www willcomamerica.com. To reach our sales staff, call 877-657-7500 or email software sales at willcomamerica.com.